remembered this um, event that occurred many years ago. Many years ago, back in high school, I told my friend when moving to Illinois, Kenny, about what occurred. And this was before I defended Kenny. <laughs> and if Kenny didn't believe me before um, I defended him, he sure believed me afterwards. <laughs> so I went to St. John Vianney High School for two and a half years. Originally had gone for like a week or two to Marlboro High School. But then, like, there was this female who threw this temper tantrum about her purse, and it was like, yeah, no, like, I received it as a gift from someone, and she threw this temper tantrum. Ironically, I think her name was Rachel, um, but anyway, so, I think she was either a sophomore, or a freshman, or Juniors. It was high school. Whatever. Anyway, so I also had wound up dealing with certain issues the first day of school because there were certain teachers that were still around in the school from when my biological father went to school. And so in homeroom class, one of the teachers had, just because the book is right here, so he picks up this book and he's look, doing the attendance during homeroom. And on one side, it had, um, you know, my name and then, you know, parental guardians, all that sort of stuff on the other. And when he got to my name, he said, Excuse me, Susan. And I was like, Yeah. He said, It says here your biological father is Michael Lee. Huh? I was like, Yeah. He said, you don't look Chinese. I said, well, you know, my biological mother is like a mix of a whole bunch of stuff, so why? And he crossed his arms and he goes, did your father go to this school? And I was like, I think so. I don't know. I guess I'll have to go home and ask. Well, before I even got back to the house, first day of school, um, I had a few issues with several teachers that all apparently spoke with that one teacher. And I get home in, in New Jersey to the house and I'm like, go up to my biological father. I'm like, why am I being treated differently at school? Because by the time I got to Latin class, or whatever class it was, um, like, I was being treated really badly. And the only thing I can remember of that, like, stuck out was what happened in homework. And he was like, well, sit down at the kitchen table, we're going to talk. And I was like, all right. What'd you do? <laughs> like... What did you do that I'm I'm being singled out for? And he said, well, back apparently when he went to high school there, um, there was like one or two Asians in the entire school for Marlboro High School. And he was born in 1951. And so by the time he went to high school, it was the really big kick of the Vietnam War. And so he was singled out along with the other Asian. The other Asian um, was smart, so like he was able to like not have as many issues because he was able to um, essentially do homework for people. And because my biological father was in different foster care and orphanages, he didn't have the same type of stuff essentially. And so one day, as it was explained to me, my biological father was walking through the gym and the football coach was teaching the football players how to do martial arts. 
and he saw Mike go by, and he was like, you, slant on it, come here. And he went, what? Now, it, this is 2020, and so while nowadays that, if that happened, the uproar that that would be, but this was back in the late 60s. So this was, you know, those who know military history know what was going on at that time, especially if they were alive at that time, and how Asians in the United States of America were treated. Because also, remember, it wasn't that long after the Second World War and the Korean War. And so my biological father says, no, 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 I, I really, I see what you're doing. And I don't think that you want me to step on this net. And the football coach said, stupid slant-eyed goop, get on the mat. And my biological father was like, I'm a third degree black belt. And my training came from a Korean master um, who's from Korea. Like, he found out about like me being an orphan and just was, took me under his wing and taught me like traditional martial arts. Third degree black belt is what I'm up to. And that was back in high school. And he said, the football coach was like, no, 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 get on the mat, I don't care. Threw a few other racial slurs out and um, then he literally picked up my biological father by the back of his neck and was like, get on the mat. I was like, all right, you really want to go there. Really don't recommend it. And the football coach was like, you know, put up your dukes, put up your dukes. And my biological father was like, if you're teaching the football team martial arts you better pay respect of your opponent first and the football coach was like no 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 and so my biological father warned the the, the football coach in five moves and kill you no problem no issues know how to do it By move three, the uh, other football coaches and assistant coaches were attempting to pull my biological father off of that football coach who challenged him. And every single one of them went to the hospital. This is important. <laughs> this is a lesson and a history at that. So I tell him, I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's right that I'm being treated differently because you're you and you apparently beat him up. <laughs> he started it. You finished it. It's one thing for him to be mad at himself for challenging you, but shouldn't take it out on me because of you. And I like you. That actually makes sense. So they wound up meeting my biological parents. My father was like, yeah, we need to get her into private school. Like, mm -mm -mm. And because the principal wouldn't do anything. The principal of South Familiar McCoy Elementary School, Carrollton Farmers Branch Independent School District. Those who don't learn from history doomed to repeat it how do you stop that and here i am so as um <clears throat> i was enrolled into saint john Vianney high school in home new jersey 
first year, not really any issues per se. And then his second year, on the other hand, there was this freshman. And he, Nick Palazzolo, had, uh, had gotten in with some of the females that I could kind of deal with. Like, I got along with them, but, like, there were certain things that not so much. So, right before what happened on the bus was um, literally, like, a couple of weeks, if that. So, back in the day, I'm going to date myself, back in the day before, like, cell phones, um... <laughs> There were these things called land phone lines. And these land phone lines were phone lines that went, you know, into the wall and connected and stuff. And so I was promised by Tony and Farinella that um, we were going to go see Biodome. I was like, yes, a comedy. I want to see a comedy. It sounds so much fun right now. And then when I got there, Tony Ann, Michelle, Teresa, and then a few other female. Oh, Jennifer was there as well. And a few others got tickets for Titanic. No offense to the guy who made the movie Titanic or any of the actors or any of that. But, like, look up the genres. It's just, like, just two different ends of the spectrum. And so... I had said I would prefer to see Biodome. I really think it would be better because I really don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I don't. I don't want to see Titanic. I'm not in the mood for a, a love story that doesn't seem like it's going to turn out to be a love story. In that, and um, you know, everybody in that group was like, "No, you don't know the ending." It could be so romantic and you don't even know. And I was like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like I'm sure that there are like disaster movies where there is romance. I'm sure there is. But like this just does not seem to be like the type of movie that's going to have that. And all of the females were like, no, nah, no. Nah. Well, of course, all of them had their boyfriends with them. So I'm just like, oh. I want to see Biodome. <laughs> I just... <laughs> That's what I want to see. And a bunch of the males were like... I was like, I got you. <laughs> because they didn't actually know me, those guys. Like, I, you know, I, I mean, realistically. And because they, you know, just passing in the hallways and stuff. And so... <laughs> I told the, the females when we went to the restroom, I'm like, you know, I really think that we should like exchange the tickets. And they're like, no, nah, we're not gonna. We're gonna go see Titanic. I really think it would be a really good idea. And they're like, no. We're gonna see Titanic. It's romance. Yankee. I highly recommend. Because if we do not go and see Biodome, I promise you, unlike your promise to me, I am going to get to a point where you are going to be mad, and I'm not going to care at all. And I'm going to laugh, and a bunch of others are going to laugh, and it's not going to be at the movie, they're going to laugh at you. And the females were like, no, you're going to fall in love with your movie, blah, 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 blah. Every one of you have boyfriends here, and I don't, because I'm not allowed to date. Because at that time, I was too young to date. And so... Uh, okay. I really recommend we go see Biodome. I think we'll have more fun. No? No? Okay. Fine. You're going to pay. Hope it's worth it. <laughs> I really hope it's worth it to you. And they were just like, oh, Susan, you know, just, 
just, you know, stop. I was like, ah, is that you making a mistake? I guesstimate you're about to find a so, going to the Titanic movie. Both people who have seen that movie, <clears throat> there is a specific part that is not nearly as well known in some regards as others. And... <laughs> So there's this part where, like, obviously people know the Titanic hit an iceberg. And then, you know, like, sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Like, that's, that's, well, a part of the bottom of the ocean. Anyway. So there's this part in the movie where <laughs> the ship's going back and forth, capsizing back and forth. And there are these people who are holding on to the railing, not the Roman, not that part. <laughs> They're holding on to the railing for dear life. And it's one of those, oh, I'm looking, I'm looking. So for those in the East Coast, funny or anything like that but just because you know they start to, and I didn't want to see and I wanted to see Biotone and I was throwing a temper tantrum so <laughs> I waited I was stealth as stealth could be and everybody's just you know the females are all oh, 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 like you knew that it was gonna hit an iceberg why are you crying like I don't understand why you're all, oh, hold me. What, you knew the ship was going to hit an iceberg. Like, I mean, it, it's a historical movie. The, the ship was going to hit the iceberg and it was going to sink. Like, the, the, come on now. Oh, hold me. It's like, uh. So, <laughs> there's this point where the, the back of the ship, ship goes upward and there's this guy who falls and like splats into the propeller blade. And I saw it coming. I was like, History? No, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So, <clears throat> a few weeks go by and it's a little scuffle on the bus. And um, Tony Ann comes over to where I'm sitting on the bus, which was at a diagonal spot. And she goes, Susan! And I'm like, yeah. What? She goes, I heard from Jennifer you were flirting with my boyfriend. No. I was not. <laughs> Go back to looking at whatever book I was reading. 
and she, you heard me, me, me. And I, no, I'm telling you, I didn't. I don't know why Jennifer would tell you that I was flirting with your boyfriend because I wasn't. And me, 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 me. and so like because she wouldn't stop, I was like, so I'm not allowed to date. You're like I'm gonna be as childish as possible because. <laughs> I don't care. Just, just go away. Like, I've never looked at your boyfriend like that. So, you know, like, what insults can I think of that, you know, just da -da 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 -da, go through? And she pushes me then. Take it back. <laughs> I don't think you should push me. I didn't flirt with your boyfriend. I didn't do anything. Let me just push me again. I'm like, all right, now, now, three strikes, you're out. So, <clears throat> she pushed me again. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, my hair was in a ponytail where I had a fan, like with some hair coming up up in like a couple of pens and then like chopsticks and it was dress down day so I could wear a pair of jeans and I had a white ribbed t-shirt creamish color with a turtleneck but the not one that folded just one of the ones that were built in long sleeve and all I know is she pushed me at the, the, the point where the bus was turning to get onto church road the first or the second time and then by the time we passed Monica's house um, that would be the time of the third push and then we were at my house and I was like and I told you to leave me alone put my backpack on didn't flirt with your boyfriend <laughs> just walked off the bus my biological mother was at the house. Like I saw her car in the driveway and it's like, oh. <sighs> I'm gonna have to run up the stairs. I'm like try not to, cause I could feel like a little bit of wind and, and from the back of my shirt. I'm like, oh, big thick brush shirt. So get in the house get up like halfway up the stairs and I hear my biological mother, what happened to your shirt? Because she saw the rip, I didn't get it. I mean, it was a turtleneck. There's only so high that you can put the backpack without it looking weird. So, turn around, I'm holding on the straps. I'm just like, Ugh. actually, it's kind of funny because I got a tank top off, so I could be like, oh, mom, like, just, can I just, Go change. Well, at that point, she just ah! what? <laughs> it's just a rip in the back of my shirt. Like what? And she's at the bottom of the stairs screaming, "Why do you have blood all over you?" Blah. So I look at my fist and I'm just like, "Well, it's not mine." <laughs> It's a big deal. And then I had to go downstairs and I had to listen to her cry for hours until I got back to the house. And it's like, ugh, can I like change my shirt since you pointed out that like my white shirt was about this color in splotches. <laughs> almost looked a little tie-dyed and but not and so you know he gets in and he's like so what happened and I was like well <laughs> told him what happened and he was like so you defended yourself yeah like Tony Ann pushed me so just defended myself okay well you know go like wash off of all that blood off of your fists and, you know, your face and, you know, just <laughs> throw your shirt and pants out because you're covered in blood. Oh, well, 
It's not mine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Shower works. And so... <laughs> What happened on a Friday at St. John Day High School's bus on the on the way to the house on Church Road? And so, following Monday, get into homeroom. My biological mother drove me to Prudential in Homedell where she worked and then dropped me off at the school. I get to homeroom class and magic. Her name literally was Magic. Magic Hess. She runs up to me, she's like, Susan. And I was like, yes, that's me. She goes, oh my God, I heard that you got into a fight. People who have been in high school understand. And I was just like, yeah, I gotta finish my work. And, <laughs> and Magic was like, I heard you beat up like the whole bus. People who have been in high school understand how that goes. And I was just like, no, just got into a fight with Tony Ann because, you know, she thought I flirted with her boyfriend, but I didn't. And she was like, no, 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 Susan. Like, oh my God, like we heard that you like obliterated like everybody. And I was like, no, I like Tony Ann pushed me. And then I like defended myself. That's all. I finished my homework. <laughs> I didn't have time to do it over the weekend because I was in a lot of trouble for that with my biological mother. And so, like, the rest of the homeroom class was like, Susan, you got to tell us about what happened between you and Tony and Farinella and the entire bus. And I'm like, it was just me defending myself. Why are you telling me that, the like, you heard I beat up a bunch of people. Like, Tony Ann is the last person I remember seeing. And then, like, I, I just was defending myself, and I just saw red everywhere. And so that was it. Like, I just, I just, you know, like, you know, that's all. Well, then over the PA system, you know, Susan, you to the dean's office! <sighs> okay. And then everybody in the homeroom's like, ooh, and it's like, really, you were just like, ah, and it's... <laughs> so bad. So, I go to the dean's office, the dean's secretary looks at me, she's like, yes, and I was like, so I'm Susan, and she's like, you're Susan? I'm like, yeah, the dean, like, Wanted to see me? Y you? You heard the announcement, right? Yeah? You're Susan? I'm like, what, what did I do? Like, I don't understand. So I, I, I'm allowed to go to the back and I go in and there is Tony Ann Farinello with her parents. Michelle, I don't remember what her last name is. Teresa, Nick Palazzolo. And then, like, one other female, all of them have at least their mom, their dad, or both. I look at the dean, and I'm like, hey, where, like, where, what, what's going on here? Now, all of the children had broken noses at minimal. Like, one of them had their mouth wired shut. Um, there was one that had, like, a freaking cast that had their arm out to here and stuff like that and I was just like um what's going on and the dean was like do you see what you did and I'm like no I fought her I, I only fought Tony Ann I didn't fight I don't know what's going on with this stuff but I, I fought Tony Ann that's who I fought <laughs> like I, I, don't, I don't deny that I, I fought her I don't know what happened with all these other people, but, like, sucks for them, it wasn't me. And they, he was like, well, you sit down, you're in trouble. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do they get to have their parents here and I don't? My parents biologically pay your salary, like, with their checks to the private high school parochial, you know, and stuff. 
And the guy was like, the dean, he was just like, you're ready. So I, I left the office. I went around the corner to where the opposite side of the hallway was the cafeteria. I pick up the, the phone and I'm like, yeah, hi, dad. <laughs> he's just on the other end. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, so you know that fight I got into that, you know? And he's like, yeah. I said, um... Apparently, I was in a fight with more than just Tony Ann Farinella, and I didn't know it. And so, like, the Dean is, like, having all of their parents here, and um, he said, you are not important enough to be at the school. And I told him that, you know, you pay his salary, and yeah, you know, I'm just and he was like, I'll be there in ten minutes, and he was there in twenty. It doesn't matter whether it was ten or twenty because Morganville, New Jersey, to Homedale, New Jersey, he was there by like nine ten a.m. People know the traffic in that area, and so he shows up. But when he shows up, so let me pause. So I walk back in to the dean's office and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and the dean was like, yeah, well, I'm not going to let him in. And I was like, uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're, you're, you're going to, I, I promise he will be in this office. <laughs> like, Mm -mm, I promise. And the dean was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Well, biological father walks in and he was tall. Like, despite being a first generation Chinese male, he grew up in foster care and orphanages. So he did not grow up eating, you know, like organic. And like, he got whatever the government gave him. And so, <laughs> he looked like a Samoan. In some ways. Not to be racist, just he was six foot like three and a first generation Chinese male. Shazam! Like a six foot three Chinese male and like really broad shoulders and just no, like no, like there's a guy that I dated a little bit named Lawrence, and Lawrence's shoulders are smaller <laughs> by a little bit, and I'm not trying to be like mean about that. It's just the reality. And so the dean was like, "Who are you?" And he goes, "I, I, that one, that one, meaning me." And the dean, who was like this, <laughs> he's like. You better get out of my office. I'm the dean and blah, 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 blah. And my biological father's like, yeah, so um, I pay your salary because I <laughs> pay the checks. And I'm going to be in it because that's, you know, with me. And, you know, like, yeah. And the dean, you don't know, like the little chihuahua, just like, yip, 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 yip. And the dean, <laughs> Mike's just like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, no, that's that's not going to be the way this works. And the dean was like, I know better, blah, 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 and da-da-da, and I've got everybody under my thumb, and blah, blah, blah. That would be when the principal came out from standing behind my biological father's back, and he's like, so, hey, <laughs> remember me? I actually am in charge of you. And so, hey. And the dean's really quick. Oh, well, principal so-and-so and so. I didn't know that you could hear me say that I was more in charge than you. So, you know, okay. Okay. So my biological father sits down and he's just like, so you all say your, your, your sides of the story of whatever. And each one of the kids are like, well, and he had to stop the parents because the parents were like, look what your daughter did to my daughter. Look what your daughter did to my son. Look what your daughter did to my daughter. And that was when Mike was like, yeah, so each of you, you know, <laughs> get to each one of you after 
you. And so, you know, Tony Ann went first and she's like, yeah, I told her I heard that she was flirting with my boyfriend in high school and blah, 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 blah. And then I pushed her three times. So you pushed my daughter three times before she defended herself. Yeah, and then, you know, your daughter beat me up. <laughs> and he's like, so my daughter defended herself after you pushed her three times after accusing her of something she didn't do. Yes! Okay, next. <laughs> and then the rest of the females and one male. Well, you know, we saw that Tony Ann was punching ish <sighs> on Susan, so we were going to defend Tony Ann's point of view. And then, like, your daughter, like, beat us up and look what she did to us, you know, with the exception of Nick Palazzolo, his mouth was wired shut. And so his mom had to speak for him. It was your dad who did to my son. He was just going and getting involved in a fight between four females and, you know, your daughter. And then, you know, he started swinging on your daughter with, like, punches or what, whatever. And, you know, your daughter beat up my son for, you know, hitting her. Biological father just said, hmm, so your son was... Hitting my daughter. Like the only time, ironically, that my biological father was like, oh, that's bad. But that is what it is. Anyway, so then, you know, afterwards, the parents were like, look what your daughter did to our children. And she's like, so what? All five? Like, Susan, what do you weigh? And at that time, I like, I think I was barely at 100 pounds. I'm five foot four. And so, maybe five foot two at that time. And so, you know, like, and he said, she's like literally that weight. And like, look at her. And, and how much do you weigh, Tony Ann? And Tony Ann, with an I, not a Y, had said, you know, oh, um, I'm a hundred. I think she said she was like a hundred and, she was like 150 or 145 pounds. And then, like, down the line of the rest of them, and each one was more than that. And, you know, then the parents were, like, going after my biological father. He's like, so she defended herself after all of your children went after her, and you want to sue me after all of your children gagged up to attack my daughter. And I was like... Apparently that's what they want to do. Can they do that? And my biological father goes, so let me explain something to you. She's one person. Your children are five together. <coughs> and um, they all jumped my daughter on a school bus and you're mad that you had to take them to the hospital. And let me tell you what a judge is going to say to that. You're going to have to actually pay my daughter because your five children ganged up against my daughter. And she beat them up. And the judge is going to be like, well, your children shouldn't have ganged up on one female by herself and probably rip into the boy, Nick Palazzolo. And... So a few weeks after that, they all got two weeks of suspension in school, plus two months of Saturday suspension. I got two Saturday suspensions because no way in school. I mean, yeah, technically it wasn't even school. It was on the school bus, which is not the same as fighting in school. And again, it was self-defense. A little late to make that argument, but it is realistic. Anyway, at some point, Nick Palazzolo said, I'm going to make a website about you. I was like, what is, what is a website? Because <laughs> that time, I had not even had an email yet. His friend Jackie at her house in Marlboro, who attended St. John Vianney High School as well, that would be the first place I made the first email I had. And with Yahoo, and because she said that was the group you go through or something, I don't know. But anyway, 
if something had any any of my it stuff had to do with any of those five and instead of like growing up and and like not being um it's a really long time because I left New Jersey to go to Illinois in 1998 or 1999, one or the other. Either way, really long time, because it's 2020, and so if they held a grudge because I beat them up for defending myself after they jumped me and I defended myself, well, they should have known better than to mess with my Medal of Honor archives, right? saying uh, so yeah probably wouldn't go so well if that's the case causing problems to my middle on our art project but especially if any of them had something to do with causing harm to my children because that would uh well, every mama bear is extremely protective of her cubs. So that just shouldn't take your head and try to figure out. And so, yeah, just saying, um, there's a thunderstorm going on. Like and share this video and subscribe to my webpage.